Hi, this is Manos Perlakis, and this is video 8.5 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a review of seven global guiding principles for CTO PCI. This video is inspired by a manuscript that was published in circulation in 2019 that was the result of a global collaboration that distilled seven principles that should be used to guide the procedure. The first one is about the indication. And the main indication for performing CTO PCI is to improve symptoms. We do have six randomized control trials that have compared CTO PCI with non CTO PCI, with um, the Euro CTO studies showing benefit in terms of symptoms at one year. However, this was not seen in decision CTO. There was symptomatic benefit in the two smaller impactor CTO and common CTO studies, whereas the Explorer and the Revask looked at ejection fraction. We also know, however, that uh, patients who do have a CTO have worse outcomes, both short-term and longer-term, when they present with an acute coronary syndrome. And this is logical because having a CTO means that if the patient develops an acute coronary syndrome, the extent of ischemia is going to be much larger than if the patient did not have a CTO. This is reflected also in the guidelines. The European guidelines and the ACCHA guidelines provide a recommendation for symptomatic improvement. It is a 2A recommendation in the European guidelines and 2B in the ACCHA guidelines. The next of the fundamentals have to do with the technical parts of the procedure. How do we perform CTOPCI? And uh, the first key principle there is the dual angiography and careful angiographic review. That is why we do need a two access point in most patients and a variety of configurations can be used either by femoral, by radial or femoral radial. But having the dual angiogram can really provide a better understanding of the occlusion and help, guiding, uh, help guide the CTO crossing attempts. How do we look at the angiogram? It should be done in a systematic way, looking at the beginning of the occlusion or the proximal cap, the length and the composition and the tortuosity of the occluded segment, the size and quality of the distal vessel, and the presence of collateral vessels. Looking at the angiogram is not the same as understanding what we're looking at. So that's why a long and geographic review is important to allow enough time for things to sink in and to actually understand what the coronary anatomy is. I often say that after 10-15 minutes what we see on the angiogram is completely different than what we see over the first five minutes of looking at it. Also calculating various CTO scores like the J CTO score, the progress CTO score can be very helpful because it forces us to focus at specific parts of the angiogram and helps us understand it better. We have increasing use of coronary CTA for planning coronary CTO PCI, and there was one study showing better success, especially in the more complex lesions, when coronary CTA was performed prior to the procedure. It is very important to insert a safety wire in the donor vessel when performing CTO PCI. The reason is that donor vessel occlusion can be a catastrophic, potentially lethal effect, and having a safety wire can facilitate treatment of this complication and prevent rapid deterioration of the patient. CTO PCI should be done, the crossing attempts, using a microcatheter. There are several kinds of microcatheters, single lumen and dual lumen, and angulated microcatheters, smaller and bigger ones. But the bottom line is that in 2022, unless there are some pressing financial considerations, CTO PCI should be done using a microcatheter to help uh, guide the wire, allow reshaping of the wire, and increase the penetra penetrating force of the guide wire. And it is actually best to have a dedicated CTO card with the wires, microcatheters, that makes things faster during the procedure. Using an algorithmic approach helps. There is now a global CTO crossing algorithm that was reviewed in video 8.4 that breaks down crossing of the procedure in 10 different steps and provides a helpful blueprint for performing CTO crossing. This is not a Bible, 
things are variable and um, there is always a need for adapting the algorithm to the local demands of a case, but it provides a nice overview and a very useful way to think about how to cross CTO PCI. There are also algorithms within the algorithms. For example, this is the algorithm for balloon and crossable lesions that will be discussed in a separate video. Change is critical when performing CTO PCI. This is prominently featured in the hybrid algorithm, the global CTO crossing algorithm, and the guiding principles, because the reality is that uh, the initial CTO crossing strategy is successful in only about half the cases, and changing to one or more strategies is important to finally achieve success. However, once we cross the CTO, this does not mean that the procedure is over. We need to take the time to optimize the result. There are trials showing that using IVUS for optimizing the stent was associated with lower incidence of MACE at 12 months. So we need to take the time and perform intravascular imaging and achieve uh, the best possible result with as large uh, expansion of the stents as safely possible. Finally, when it comes to complications, CTO PCI does have increased risk of complications, so the operators should be afraid should be very afraid, at the same time should not be paralyzed. It is important to know the different types of complications that will be covered in separate videos, such as acute vessel closure, perforation, equipment loss of entrapment, and uh, to be monitoring the patient constantly during the procedure, so that if a complication happens, the, pro the complication can be discovered quickly and taken care of because it spirals and causes worse consequences. We do know that experienced centers have high success rates, about 85 to 90 percent, with about 2 to 3 percent risk of major complications. However, when we look at non-selected centers, success is much less, about 50 to 60 percent. This is from NCDR, this is from England and Wales. So success is better at experienced centers, and uh, that makes sense because the more cases one operator does in one center, the higher the success and the lower the complication rates. And this is uh, the last global guiding principle, which is that CTO PCI should be done at experienced, well-equipped centers. But if you are not there yet, that does not mean you cannot get there. And education is critical for moving from the less experienced to the more experienced and the experienced and more successful center. So learning remains at the core of CTO PCI and can be achieved in different ways by watching cases, by reading, by participating in webinars. But the most important is to actually perform cases and uh, do what is called a deliberate practice, which is very ripe for CTO PCI because now we do have a fairly well-established field. As mentioned before, we do have algorithms, we do have well-established ways to open the CTOs, and there are actually many excellent operators and teachers who can help people who want to learn improve their skills in a safe way, achieving good pace and outcomes. So to summarize, these are the seven global principles for CTO PCI. The principal indication is to improve symptoms. Dual angiography and careful angiographic review is critical, as is use of a microcatheter to support the guide wire and allow guide wire exchanges. We do have four CTO crossing strategies that uh, can be used uh, based on various algorithms, such as the hybrid or the global CTO crossing algorithm. Change, changing the strategy is important to increase the likelihood of success. CTO PCI should be done at experienced and well-equipped centers. And crossing the CTO is not the end, but stand deployment should be optimized to achieve the optimal long-term results. Thank you.